Instagram, and et cetera, whom are watching us today. Let me first say thank you to everyone for fellowshipping with us today. Let me introduce myself. I am the Associate Pastor Beverly Silas of the Great I Am Faith Center. Please prepare your elements now for communion and your tithes and offerings, for I shall perform and pray over them both. Now here is your encouraging word for today, which comes from Psalms 103. I'm going to read 1, 2, and 3, and number 8. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all of our diseases. Number eight, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. May the Lord bless you and keep you all. The next voice you shall hear will be Pastor Dr. Melvin Silas. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. How is everybody this morning? For, for y'all out there in internet land, we didn't have church already this morning sitting up in here. <laughs> we just going to continue on from there. Praise God. Praise God. Most of you uh, received a, a text that, you know, is on our church text list. And i just like to go over that text again. All right, let me see if I can get this working right. There we go. And I'm going to decree and declare this over each and every one of you. And those of you that did receive the text, you ought to save it in your text so you could decree it over your own life also. I decree and declare this is our month of new beginnings. We shall experience a new encounter with God. We shall experience new miracles every day. Our health shall be strong. Our finances shall be multiplied. We shall be at peace. And no evil shall come near our dwelling. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that. And you need to speak that every day. You need to speak that over yourself every day. You need to say that. You need to say it like you really mean it and you really believe it. You know, because so many things that we say may not be in line with what God wants you to say about your own self. And I want you to really start to notice what you're saying and what you're thinking about your own life. In Job, it says, you decree a thing and it shall be established. Okay? I want you to start speaking what you want out of life. Start seeing where you want to go in life. Your life is not over. Your life is just beginning. You understand that you ought to be shouting right about then. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to shout. <laughs> My life is just not beginning. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. Amen. I don't know what it takes to get y'all excited, my God, but that's got me excited. Sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness, my goodness. I want you to believe what you, what you say about yourself. I want you to believe what God says that you can have in life. I want you to believe that everything is possible to those who believe. Be a believer. Amen. Matthew 26. Let me get my stuff together here. It reads like this. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 36 in chapter 26. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even 
to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not I, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, What? You could not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you, you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Three times he found his disciples sleep. I want you to understand that this moment was a hard moment for Jesus. He said that his soul was deeply sorrowful. He knew what he was about to face. He knew who he was that was going to face it. See, he brought these men with him to pray with him at a hard moment in his life. But yet, he said they were sleepy and fell asleep. But he asked them, can you not watch with me one hour? One hour. How many times has God found us asleep? <laughs> I know you, uh -huh, don't act like you, you ain't the only one. He woke you up in the middle of the night and you thought you had to go to the bathroom. No, it was for you to pray. It was for you to partner with him. For you to come into agreement with him about things that may be happening in your life, your family's life, or the kingdom of God. How many times has he asked you to pray but you couldn't find the time? Too busy. I need 15 more minutes of sleep. I found myself like that. You know, I, I, you know that's why I had to move my alarm clock on the other side of the room fast because it was too, too convenient to reach out to bed and click. But now I find myself, I get up, walk over there, and click it off, and get back in the bed. So I'm, I've got to figure something else now. <laughs> i got to figure something else. Because, you know, it was good for a minute, but then I was like, man, click, and I go right back up under the covers. Mm -hmm. Prayer is important. It really is. Prayer is important. God created us as speaking spirits, all right? To be able to communicate with him. To be able to voice what our hurts, our likes, our dislikes are. He doesn't say you come to me and talk to me only about these things. He says come to me and talk to me. He wants to make himself available to each and every one of us. And that is through prayer. But somehow, some way, we have put prayer on the back burner. You know, we want to walk in amazing faith. But you can't walk in amazing faith without having an amazing prayer life. I'm going to tell you that now. See, there's certain things that just won't go hand in hand unless you have them hand in hand. Okay? Yeah. Communicating with God, some people think it's a right. But it's not a right. It is a privilege. A privilege that God has given us to be able to come before the Creator and speak to Him. This is a privilege. And we don't sometimes see it as a privilege. Sometimes we can see it as a barber. 
as, as an inconvenience because I don't have time. I got to clean the house. I got to cook. I got to go to work. I got to do all of this. You know, you know what? God knows everything that you've ever had to do and everything you will have to do. But God also knows he wants to talk to his children. I found something by E.M. Bounds. Okay. Some of you may not recognize his name, but if you look at it, look him up, he was a very powerful man in the eight in, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is what he wrote. All revivals depend on God. But in revivals, as in other things, he invites and requires the assistance of man. And the full result is obtained when there is cooperation between the divine God and humans, us. Cooperation. That's why God says that you are co-workers with him. Okay? He goes on to say this. In other words, to employ a familiar phrase, God alone can save the world. But God chooses not to save the world alone. God and man unite for the task. The response of the divine being in, 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 inevitably set for the desires of man to participate. The cooperation then being necessary, what is the duty which we as co-workers with God require to undertake? First of all, and most important of all, the point which we desire particularly to emphasize, we must give ourselves to prayer. To prayer. See, people talk about let's have a revival, but first a revival has to happen in you before it happens in your church. You know? See, revival is not for the unbeliever, but the unbeliever gets blessed from the revival because of the overflow. But the revival has to start in you. You have to start learning how to get on your knees and praying, praying through. Don't wait till the fire starts and then want to call God. You could have avoided a lot of things that happen in your life if you spend time in prayer. It's amazing how you can have a picnic, a barbecue picnic at church and everybody from the church and their friends and their friends come to the picnic. But then you have a prayer meeting everybody's too busy you remember how God moved Lisa when we had those shut ins God moved in the mist when we stayed in this church and prayed overnight many of you were there you experienced the dynamics the, 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 the amazing and dynamic things that God did in your life from you devoting your time to prayer See, we must, <clears throat> we must give ourselves to prayer. Dr. J. Wilburn Chapman reminds us of this. We are born in prayer. When Wesley prayed, England was revived. When Knox prayed, Scotland was refreshed. I'm talking about revivals over the years, the 1800s, amazing revivals that took place. When the Sunday school teacher of Tannley, Tannley Brook prayed, 11,000 young people were added to the church in a year. Whole nights of prayer have always been successful by whole days of soul winning. Here's a couple of quotes. I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time walking and sleeping it doesn't change God prayer doesn't change God prayer changes me <laughs> C.S. Lewis I have too much to do I have too much to do that I spend time I spend the first three hours in prayer Martin Luther okay <laughs> prayer is important and we have to we have to bring prayer back into our individual lives and back into our churches See, we've gotten so comfortable trying to look good in church that we can't work up a sweat, you understand me, and get our hair messed up, you understand me? Uh-uh, no more. 
Uh -uh. Stop talking to me about what, 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 how great things were done in the book of Acts when we could do the same things right now today. All it requires is a participation from man and women to cooperate with God. You see, there's an environment that miracles happen. There's an environment that deliverances take place. There's an environment that has to be created by you and me that the Holy Spirit will be able to move as he desires to move. No more coming in wondering who's looking at you and who's not looking at you. You understand me? You put your hands together and start worshiping and praising God. You start, you start to know that you are in service by yourself. Mm -hmm. By yourself. Don't worry about who's to the left or to the right. Uh-uh. I came here to get something from God. I came here to hear something from God. See, we, we can look at the life of Jesus and we can see how he prayed. He prayed with others. He prayed for others. And he prayed on his own. <laughs> Prayer was a fundamental part of Jesus' life. It was his lifeline with God. In Luke 9, 28 and 29, after eight days, after eight days, Jesus said he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up into a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became bright as flashes of lightning. Prayer can change you. Prayer can change your situation. Prayer can change your circumstances. Prayer is important. Jesus prayed for others. Mark, uh, Matthew 19 and, and, and 3. Excuse me, Ma Matthew 19, 13. Then Jesus brought little children. Then they brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on the little children and pray for them. We have to start praying over our kids. We have to see if you stop and you look. This 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 this, this COVID thing, it done switched from the old to the younger people. And I just told first lady, I said, seems like the enemy is trying to take out the next generation. You got to pray. You got to pray over your kids. You got to pray over your kids. You got to take the authority that God has given you. He says he's giving you all authority. You got to stand up and you have to use that authority. And you have to tell the devil, the principalities of hell, the rulers of wickedness, you cannot have my kids. Mm -mm. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to pray for them. One thing I learned when I read the book of Job, it said that Job prayed and gave sacrifices for his kids on a daily basis. Luke 6 and 12, it says, one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. How can we, in a past life, spend all night partying and when it comes to praying at night, we can't give him a good 20 minutes? Seems like, you know, but see, that's where the flesh comes in. Seems like when you start to pray at night, when you had a long day, your body becomes comatose. Don't lie. <laughs> You're like, uh, no, we got to change the way we think about this. We got to get up and know if, if we're falling asleep, stand up, walk around and start praying. Don't give the enemy that advantage over you. You know, we have a challenge that we're doing for you to spend 15, 20 minutes in the morning and in the evening. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes total out of what? 24 hours to give God, to read one chapter, which is another 15, 20 minutes. The reason that that challenge was given is to give you the discipline in your life. They say after 21 days, things become a habit. Well, we're trying to get each of us disciplined to do the things that we need to do in the morning. 
to wake up in the morning and to include God in our life, in our day, to ask God to guide us, to be with us through the things that we will face during that day, to be with us with the people that we will meet during that day. We don't know what we're going to experience that day. We don't know what's going to happen that day. But when we wake up in the morning, we can ask God to be with us no matter what happens in that day. Prayer is important. I look at myself and I had to feel very convicted. When I first started in ministry, the time that I spent in prayer compared to the time that I spend now. And I have to repent today because it was that time in prayer that the word was revealed to me, that the Holy Spirit was, was teaching me so much. But now I step into a position and I feel that I'm so busy. Uh, I got so much going on that I can't give God the time that he deserves. I had to repent of that. He's given me so much. He's given you so much. And you mean to tell me we can't give some time back to him? Huh? Are we that selfish? Are we that self-centered? That we're going to neglect the God that we serve? Oh, I know some people say, I pray, I pray. Yeah, you always pray. Uh huh. I know you do. When you're running out to the car to jump in your car to go to work, when you're on the freeway and it's crowded, but do you ever set time aside just for God? That's what I'm asking you. It's amazing how your boss can set an appointment for you. <laughs> and you'll make it there on time and sit there and even if you're not interested, act like you're interested. See, people that's important to you, when they make an appointment with you, you honor that appointment. If you feel God is important to you, how about you start making some appointments with him? Pastor, don't make me feel bad. That's what I'm trying to do. Because <laughs> we got to stop it. We got to stop it. I see the enemy coming in, 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 in waves in waves to the, to the believer's life, to the church. Where are the prayer warriors? In the Old Testament, God said he looked for a man to stand in the gap. But there was none. Have we come to that time again? Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the ones that will, 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 will lay hands on the sick and believe that they will be used by God to be a, a vessel that he could go through and heal the sick? Huh? Where are we? Oh, there are Pauls, there are Timothys, mm -hmm. there are Deborahs, uh-huh, listening to me now that God wants to use. Will you yield yourself to him? See, we have to have confidence in God. See, God invites us to come to him with confidence. <laughs> but yet many people don't have real confidence in God. You know, I, you know, some of you sports fanatics, you know, which I am not. <laughs> you know, when somebody be talking about a team and you can tell they don't know nothing about sports, you know. See, me, I find just enough to know that I can get in a good conversation <laughs> and then I know how to back out of it because that's all I know. I, I just read that in the paper a couple of days ago and I move on. But you can tell if you stay long enough that they don't know nothing about sports. Well, see, a lot of times if you listen to a person long enough, you can tell that they really don't have confidence in God. They have the conversation of confidence, but they don't have the application of confidence. There is a difference. You know, back in the day, we called it talking a good game. You can talk a good game. <laughs> but the thing of it is that they ain't looking for couch quarterbacks. They want, they want people that's participating on the field. See, even though we are aware of his great love for us, sometimes we can have a challenge in having confidence in him. You know, we're going through major things challenges and, and, and we want to have confidence but we, we just don't have the confidence that we need to have 
See, confidence in God makes things possible. It relieves us, hear me, relieves us of worry and mental torment. What do I mean? Worry should not be a part of your life. It's so, it's so profound when I looked up worry a year, years back and did a study on worry that the medical profession considers worry a disease. And from worry, many medical problems have arisen in people's lives because of worry. See, if we have confidence in Jesus being our healer as we listen to that song in praise and worship, if we have confidence that he is our healer, then we shouldn't have to worry. You see, I understand that a doctor gives his diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That's what he does. He's a doctor. He does that. But I also understand that Jesus is not practicing as a physician. He is the physician. So he looks at me and tells me that I'm healed. I'm going to believe the doctor. You see, that's having confidence in God. And, it, and your confidence will always be challenged. Because when you are saying I am healed and your back still hurt, <laughs> the devil say, I thought you was healed. Uh-huh. See, receiving and walking in your healing does not mean that you do not have challenges in your body. What you are relying on is what the scripture says, that by his stripes, I have been healed. That's what you're relying on. Now, my body is speaking to me, but I'm speaking back to my body. Body, you need to line up with the word. I'm speaking to my mind. Mind, you're not going to think these thoughts anymore. Yeah, you keep bringing them through my head. Oh, no, I plead the blood over my mind. My, my, my mind belongs to Christ. And I'm going to fight these thoughts with the word of God. See, we have to change, people. We cannot go through 17 months of what we went through and then come out and still be acting the same way. If you are still here, there are, I think, close to 600,000 or more people that have died because of the pandemic. If you are still here. If you are listening to me today, it is because God has a reason for your life. And you should do something about it. Don't waste what God has given you. You could be the next person to save, to speak a word to your neighbor and your neighbor's life change. You could be the person that speaks to the person at the grocery store and changes their life. You have a purpose. God instructs us to have confidence in him. My God, it's a fight to have confidence. I know it. I know it. I know it. When everything, everything seems opposite of what you're confessing. When nothing seems to be going right. And you're still saying, Lord, I believe you. I know the battle. I know the fight. You're not the only one. But I do know that he said, this is his word. All things are possible to those who believe. I believe, Lord. And when I have big challenges, Naomi, I'm like the man over there in the gospel that said, Lord, help me with my unbelief. I ain't going to be ashamed to say it because I know it's my belief that will receive from him. So I will say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. See, when we talk about confidence, the Bible tells us a great deal about confidence. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, let us, the believers, approach God's throne of grace, of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Let us place, let us come to the place where there is unlimited favor for us with confidence let us approach with confidence why can I approach with confidence because I am his child because he has invited me because he wants to talk to me because he has something for me 
because he wants to show me a way that I may not know to go. He wants to guide and direct me in a way that only he can. He wants to bring me out of a dark place and bring me into a light. He says, I can approach with confidence. Let us, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's his word. I'm just quoting it. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, now this is the confidence that we have <laughs> in him. That if we ask anything, this is where prayer comes in, that if we ask anything according to his will, and stop right there before we go any further with this passage of scripture. He says, and this is the confidence, the assurance. This is, this is everything you need to know that if you ask anything according to his will. Some people will say, well, I just don't know his will. That might be because you just don't know him. You see, it doesn't take a lot for you to understand the will of God for your life. What do I mean? The will of God, you know he wants you to have a good life. The will of God, you know he wants you to be healed. The will of God, you know that he wants you to prosper. So if you're praying for these things, you're praying in line with his will. And he says, if you pray according to his will, then you know, you should have no doubt that you have your request. All you need to do is start thanking God from the moment you asked him until you see the manifestation of it. Do you see what I'm saying? I need to show you what I'm talking about. I need you to understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to ask, there's a book sitting on that chair. I'm going to ask Fabiola to bring me that book. Thank you, Fabiola. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now that I have this book, you see, it's in my possession. When I asked her for the book, I had to wait between the time that the book moved from its place into my possession. During that time, I'm going to thank God for it. Because right now, if I truly believe that I have it, it seems real silly to me to say, Fabiola, give me that book. She look at me like I'm crazy. She said, Pastor, you got the book. No, Fabiola, give me the book. See, a lot of you keep asking God for things that you've already asked for instead of thanking him for it. Oh, don't get upset with me now. <laughs> and you seem just as silly when you keep asking for the same thing. It's like you, you think God is deaf or you think he has Alzheimer's. You need to start thanking him for it. If you ask him for your home, you see, Lord, thank you for my home. Thank you for my home. And then you need to ask him, Lord, guide me and don't let me... Don't let me buy the wrong one, Lord. You know, because the devil going to send a house to you. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, it look good. You get up in there and got all kind of hell going on. Roof go. <laughs> anyway, I'm gone. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful. You got to ask God. You know, I know you want to get married. I know you want to have a husband. You want to have a wife. Okay, I know all of this. But you got to make sure that the one that come in your life is actually what God said. Uh huh. Man. You know, and those of you that are married, you want a good marriage? You want a good marriage? Well, pray about it. God desires for you to have a good marriage, but there's some things that you might have to change in yourself. There's some things you understand me you might have to let go of. Stop always praying for Him to change. Pray for you to change. Shoot. Maybe that's the issue. Mm. Oh, don't get mad at me now. Because <laughs> I had to do that. I kept praying for Beverly to change. 
And the Lord said, what about your change? I was like, man, I'm cool, Lord. Oh, you ain't. No, you ain't. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, do you hear me? Lord, change my heart. Uh-huh. And now for my sisters, they're looking for a husband. The Bible says, when a man finds a wife, I'm going to say that again for y'all that don't hear me. When a man finds a wife, that means are you working to make yourself wife material? Huh? Are you still popping it? You know, still, you, you, are you wife material or what? Say when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. You know, all right, all right, my brother's out there going, yeah, buddy. <laughs> hey, listen, we got to make some changes. And it's only going to come from prayer. See, I want you to understand that when Jesus, when I started out with the passage of Scripture earlier, where Jesus was with his disciples and he was facing the, one of the hardest moments of his life. And he was going to talk to his father. Notice, he didn't go to talk to someone else. He went to talk to the father at his hardest times. You need to stop talking to other people and start talking to the father. You need to say, Lord, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it out of this. My God, my God, I don't know. Lord, I don't know how I even got here. But Lord, I'm here. I need you, Lord. I need you. Lord, I'm here for you to guide me. I'm here for you to direct me. Lord, I know you love me and I love you, Lord. But I just don't know what to do right now. You got to learn to do that. You got to learn that God does not leave you in your hardest lonesome moments. You know, lonesomeness has an attack on people that is vicious. That is vicious. Because lonesome will attack you. lonesomeness will attack you that you start to think that nobody wants you. Nobody cares for you. You're all by yourself. But sometimes being by yourself, sometimes lonesomeness, all oh, can be an excellent friend. Because you get a chance to meet yourself. Woo! Somebody don't want to hear that. <laughs> somebody don't want to hear meeting myself. Oh, we pray for all kind of things to be loose, Daisy. Loose this, Lord. Loose that. How about you praying that the Lord help you loose yourself? Because a lot of you are holding yourself behind. Mm. I didn't come here to hear this, Pastor. Flip, click, sweet, or whatever you want to do. Anyway. Oh, man. My last few moments, I want to give you a few scriptures. Ephesians 6 18 it says and pray in the spirit on all occasions pray in the spirit on all occasions pray in the spirit on all occasions pray in the spirit in, on all occasions pray in the spirit on all occasions pray in the spirit on all occasions mm. that's in your heavenly language that's in your heavenly language. That's when you open your mouth up and you start to speak in your heavenly language. <laughs> Just pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray continuously. What does that mean? That means constantly have an attitude of prayer. I be driving and sometimes Beverly asks me, she said, what you say? And I, I be, you know, praying. I said, nothing. I'm just speaking to the Lord. You can be in the store talking. Lord, thank you. Talking to him in the store. You know, and now with this Bluetooth stuff, you ain't got to worry about somebody thinking you crazy. They just think you on the phone. They <laughs> thank you on the phone. Back in the day, you be in the store praying and they look, start moving out the aisle. You know, now you could just do that. You could do that. See, talk to God. See, he's not, he, 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 he's not a person that does not want to hear from you. He is a person that wants to hear from you at all times. 
in your car when you're driving. Sometimes you may need to cut the radio off and just talk to God. Ride 15, 20 minutes just talking to God. But remember, communication is two ways. Sometimes cut the radio off and just shut up and see what he has to say to you. See, God has given many of us instructions, but we were not listening for them. <laughs> Pray continuously. James 5.13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Let them pray. Let them pray. Yes, Lord. I remember a pastor I knew, a very good friend of mine. I reached out to him when I was going through things. And God bless him. And I said, I need you to pray. And he would say, man of God, have you prayed? He would ask me, have you prayed? Because the scripture says, if anyone of you is in trouble, let them pray. And then he would say, if I said, no, I haven't prayed as of yet I called you. He said, well, I want to hear you pray. And then I'm going to stand in agreement with your prayer. Because if two touch and agree is asking anything here on this earth, it shall be done for them. He says, but I want you to go to the throne of grace and God to hear your voice. Hmm. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Philippians 4 and 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, but in every situation, but in every situation, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You present it. We're going to be a church of prayer because the Bible says my house is a house of prayer. We're going to be people of prayer. I'm calling on you. Up the ante in your prayer life. I'm calling on you to do that. I'm calling on you when you're out working to pray and speak to God. I'm calling on you when you wake up in the morning to invite him into the day that he's let you into. I'm calling on you to say I love you Lord before you go to bed. I'm calling you to be people that will acknowledge God throughout your day, throughout your life. I'm calling you to be people that God will be able to work through to change the lives of others because you are a willing vessel. I'm calling you to be a people that will have confidence in the God that served you. Philippians 1 and 6 says, huh, the work that God started in you, he will complete all you got to do is stay up in his presence all you got to do is when things are not going right or you've made a mistake be honest say Lord I made a mistake I don't care if you made the mistake 15 times say it 15 times Lord I made a mistake forgive me help me Lord because it's going to come a time you're going to look up and you're not making that same mistake again hey you may be making some more but you won't be making that one because the work that God starts in you, he will complete. Oh, Lord. I leave you with this last passage of scripture. Out of 1 Samuel 12 and 23 and 24. As for me, Samuel says, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the right way, the way that is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart and consider what great th things he has done for you. I'm Pastor Melody, the great I am faith center. I love each and every one of you. 
My only desire is that you know Jesus. For those that may not know Jesus, I give you this opportunity. Those that are listening to me over this broadcast, those that may be in here that do not know Jesus. The Bible says that he is the truth. He is the way. He is the only way, the truth and the life. Follow me in this prayer. Father God, I give you my life today. I believe in you. So please, lead me in the right way. Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. Today, I surrender. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. Give me all that God has for me. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. 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 Yes. Oh, my God. You know, I had an entirely different message that I've been working on all week. <laughs> I've been working on all week.